in 2014, I lost a sister. Mm. She was born male, but she carried herself throughout her life as a female. So she was trans. She was in Baltimore, Maryland. She was murdered there in 2014. And I really didn't truly understand um, the life that my sister was living. And then once she passed away, it just dawned on my heart that, you know, I need to stand up and voice my opinion and try to find out uh, what my sister or what life she was really living while she was alive. Let's get this straight. You bought an island. I bought an island, yep. <laughs> When I tell you the boy got his own money, the boy got his own money. Braun. I'm gonna go Braun at the four and play small ball. Over Kobe? Stats don't lie. Yeah, Numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. So. Yo, yo, yo. What are you doing? I'm giving you unbelievable content for the masses. And you just gonna keep it to yourself? Do me a favor. Tap that red button right there. Subscribe, and it literally takes no time. Try it and see what happens. Yo, what's good? What's popping? What it is, what it ain't, what it could be, what it should be, what it would be. Here with another episode of Funky Friday. And I promise to give good content for the masses, but most of all, I promise to keep it funky for your asses. Now, today's guest is an NBA star, right? From North Carolina's very own Reggie Bullock. UNC, Chapel Hill, all the above, my guy, my round. Appreciate it, family. Appreciate it. Now, I was going to start listening to these damn teams. Yeah. But that's like, I want to start off right there, bro. Okay. I was like, hold on. Los Angeles Clippers, Phoenix Suns, Detroit Pistons, Los Angeles Lakers, New York Knicks, Dallas Mavericks, and currently right now, the San Antonio Spurs. Yeah. That journey, bro. Mm -hmm. Tough like, journey. <laughs> Tough journey. And I got, I was with two different teams. Mm -hmm. So I could only imagine right, right. just so much that, you know, there's a, there's a different stigma in, in sports that people don't understand or identify with. Right, right. The person that you see on Tuesday, Wednesday, or... Sundays, Saturdays, they have a family, they have routine, they have people that live vicariously through them. And what happens to them, good, bad, or indifferent, mm -hmm. those people are impacted. Mm -hmm. So when you're going through your journey, mm -hmm. team to team, like, take me through that process and that journey. Um, the journey for me, all right, so I was drafted 2013 by the Clippers. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a 25th pick. Um, I went to a great team at that time. I was up there with, you know, Blake Griffin, yeah. CP. Um, it was a playoff team. Lob, Lob City. Lob City. Uh, Doc Rivers was the coach. So immediately me coming in as a freshman, um, I was a space. I was 3D. Rookie. I was a rookie. Yeah. But I was playing behind Matt Barnes, yeah. Jared Dudley, and all these people, Jamal Crawford, J.J. Riddick. So coming in as a rookie, it's like you're not going to see no time right away. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mentally, I just knew that I had to work as a rookie. Had to learn from the vets. CP was a, a great mentor to me uh, as I was growing up. I played AAU for his AAU team, so he was like a brother to me. So with me being getting drafted to that team, it was like I was getting drafted home. You know what I'm saying? So he had me in high school. He had me throughout college. He was right there with me throughout college. And throughout the whole NBA journey, he'd been here uh, with me for the last 11 years. So that journey, I mean, you got... You're coming from a great school like Carolina, and you're thinking right away you're supposed to go to this organization right, and play. Right. You know what I'm saying? So just mentally, just having to put in the hours in the gym, believe in your skill set, people telling you, oh, you suck, you can't get no playing time, but just trying to stay mentally strong and knowing that, you know, eventually your time will come because you know how the league go. Yeah. Everybody got their own time. Everybody got their time, bro. Yep. So um, that journey was just, it was, it was mentally strong. Then I got traded uh, mm. a year and a half after uh, being drafted by the Clippers, got traded to the Phoenix Suns. Phoenix Suns is another loaded guard team. Mm. So I'm like, oh man, where I'm gonna play at on this team? Mm. So now you start, you're trying to think, is it the agent fault? You're trying to like, process. Yeah, you're trying to process, yeah, is it yeah, the agent yeah. fault? What am I doing? Why I'm not getting no answers from the GM or yeah. how can I earn minutes? So then I'm staying there for six months and got traded in the summertime. Got traded in the summertime with uh, another player, uh, one of the twin brothers, Marcus Morris, and we got traded from Phoenix Suns to Detroit Pistons. Yeah. Detroit Pistons was the first team that really gave me my opportunity. 
Now I came there as like 16th, 17th man on the roster. Like yeah. I came in as like a, uh, it was a draft pick. They drafted, I mean, they drafted Marcus, mm -hmm. but I was, you know, the throw-in players. Yeah. I was a throw-in and I actually earned my time up under Stan Van Gundy when he was there. Mm -hmm. Hard-nosed coach, loved defensive players, loved shooters, coachable players. So he really finally gave me my chance there in Detroit and played well. Blake Griffin, we end up getting Blake Griffin from uh, the Clippers. He comes to Detroit. Manham had a two-man game going. Yeah. And I finally started becoming into myself, like Followed year it, yeah. five, yeah. like year five or six. So I tell players all the time, like some of the players that's coming into league now and and not really getting any minutes. Mm -hmm. But it only take one coach to believe in you. For sure. And that coach was in Detroit, Stan Van Gundy for me. Man, listen, that whole process is different, especially in basketball. You get guys that go to the G League, they go overseas just to sharpen their tools or whatever, and they may not be ready, may or may not. And it's the right fit. Right, you feel right. me? Like everybody sees, including me, like I look at LeBron. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> Cause come out of come out of high school or come out of college with instant success. Not a lot of people do that. Right, right. There's a process that goes about mm -hmm. it. And one thing that I've learned in my process, especially coming into the league at a young age, was there's things that you may not even think you need to know that you have to know. Right, right, right. The professionalism, yep, yep, yep. you know what I'm saying? Understanding like, man, taking care of your body, um, uh, especially for football, 100% no longer exists as soon as you come in. Right, right. That's the most freshest that you're ever going to be. Yeah. You got you to gotta know the difference between hurt and an injury. Right, right, right. Yeah, you got to yeah. play through hurt. Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. Injury <laughs> is like, okay, okay cool. Yeah. Like, and heaven forbid you're on your contract year and you, you got an a, a, a injury that cannot keep you going. You feel right, me? Right, right. It's, it's, it's a, uh, affecting your play. So, you know, through it all, I... I oftentimes, I didn't start understanding this until I got released. It was like, bro, this is a business mm -hmm. by all means. Right, right. And I was lucky enough to have good rapport with management and even management still going to have to do what's best for that organization mm -hmm. with or without you. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks don't see that. They just like, man, I just love basketball. Man, I just love baseball. Man, I just love football. But yeah. you know, when you're dealing with the type of money that they're dealing with, success and 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 they're next on the chopping block too. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to be that, that sacrificial lamb. In every shadow, every spotlight, there's a tale. And my Mashika hat is the narrator. You know I never step out without a hat. There's a reason for that. It's more than just a hat, it's a vibe. It's the main character. These aren't your run of the meal hats, folks. They're handcrafted and tailored to you. Here's the deal. You can rock a Mashika hat too. Head to Mashika.com Use the code FUNKY to get 10% off, and trust me, once you feel that Mashika magic, there's no turning back. I think, uh, man, that's, that's dope to even hear, you know, CP3's impact on, on obviously you because I do things with, with the youth now. Mm -hmm. uh, how was that process? Was it surreal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so like I said, I'm from Kinston. Um, Jerry Stackhouse is from Kinston. Yeah. We got some other players from Kinston. Uh, Brandon Ingram from Kinston. But Jerry Stackhouse was like a, he was like a godfather to me when I was growing up in rec league. Mm -hmm. Like seeing a player coming from a small town like that, 20,000 people. And, and making it. And making it and yeah. seeing him make it and, and see the hard work that he did and how he come back home and how he tried to be around the kids and stuff. It always wanted me to push and try to make it to where he was. Yeah. So kept my head down, and then like my ninth grade year, um, I was getting scouted real high uh, in the nation, and I was given the opportunity to play for CP3. Mm. Now I'm just playing rec league ball around in my town, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I was given the opportunity to play for CP3, and that was like ninth, tenth grade year. He was just starting as one of his first AAU teams, and I was on the team, and he had a couple other players within the state, and you know, being around his family, uh, Mama Paul. Dad, yeah. Paul, like being around all them, you know, it was just like a family group. You know, yeah. the CP3 family was like a real family group in the state of North Carolina. So what he did for all the, the young players mm -hmm. and obviously for myself and for the current players that's still in the league now, he's still mm -hmm. pushing them out of the CP3 program. Um, it was surreal just knowing that, you know, it's a player that's one of the best players ever to play the game yeah. in his position and for him to be able to just be a person that you can just like touch. It's a, a, it's a just, tangible thing. Yeah. Right. That it's not just something that's fictional, mm -hmm. you know. Like you say, damn, like yeah, he looked cool. Like, 
Yeah. I wonder how he is. And even for me, going through a process where I may DM a player, mm -hmm. right? A kid may be in high school or whatever. Like, yo, this is real Cam Newton. Like, yeah. Go through that phase of like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. this Cam Newton. Yeah, right, right. And then all of a sudden we start going to different 707 tournaments, start working out, they come to practice and things like that. It goes from Cam Newton to, oh, that's big bro. Like, right, right, right. I know I could use him yeah, in, a, yeah. in a way that I will always be able to give back to, to the time. You know, whether it's money, whether it's a phone call, whether it's just a just being there. And, right. and now playing with Matt on Madden, you know, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. could be stress relieving to them. And, you know, it's just a whole thing. You, you've obviously have a foundation mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, Iconic Saga was a part of, mm -hmm. covered it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, take us through uh, um, the reason of the creation of, of your foundation and, and, and what is it geared towards? Um, so remarkable, um, it's not spelled the actual way remarkable is. It's what B U L L at the end. Bull. I mean, all because everybody yeah. called me Bull. So um, I started that. Uh, so to go along with why I started that, um, in 2014, I lost a sister. Mm. Um, she was she was born male, but she carried herself throughout her life as a female. So she was trans. Okay. Um, she was she was in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, she was murdered there in 2014, and I really didn't truly understand um, the life that my sister was living, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, and then once she passed away, it just dawned on my heart that, you know, I need to stand up and voice my opinion and try mm -hmm. to find out uh, what my sister or what life she was really living while she was alive. So in about 2016, I started a Remarkable Foundation. Um, and I just started linking up with the teams that I was on. And I was mm -hmm. like, yo, I want to voice my opinion. Yo, I want to stand up for the LGBTQ community. Okay. Like, yo, I want to do these things because it's something that resonated so close to me and my family yeah. that we didn't have the answers, still don't have the answers. And it was something like, okay, well, I can possibly save a life if I do this as an athlete and yeah. stand up for my sister. So I started going to like pride parades, linking up with the NBA, um, you know, getting different donations and stuff to uh, the foundation to be able to give back to the kids for black trans that's mm. being murdered all over the whole world. So, so I, I, I don't want to dwell on this, mm -hmm. but it's, it's important to acknowledge, was this a hate crime? This was a hate crime, yes. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. It was a hate crime in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, we went to trial for it and everything. Um, with me being there, I knew that that was the guy, but we ended up you know, losing the case. Uh, to her in 2014. So that really made me really stand up for it in mm. 2016 and really start this foundation and start standing up for lives. And then once I started that, it was just LGBTQ, a part of the foundation. And then I'm playing in New York with the Knicks. Um, my other younger sister, she's in the same city, Baltimore, Maryland. She's watching my game on the TV and she's in the wrong area at the wrong time and her life get lost. Oh. And this is why she watching my game. So just all of that, that was just thrown to my family with trauma and all this, you know, stuff. It just made me like become a stronger man within the community. Yeah. Made me start voicing my opinion more. And, you know, my foundation honestly made me made me my name and what I do within the community way past the basketball player Reggie Bullock. Man, that's dope. So man. Um, that would that was some of the reasons that made me really like, you know, stand up for my sisters, stand up uh bring it into the NBA, mm -hmm. try to get the NBA on board, so going to pride parades, mm -hmm. having this foundation, extending it to Belize, like doing everything. So um, just being a pioneer of my family, just having so much, you know, yeah. weight to carry for the family is just like somebody got to do it. So just Man, being that pioneer I, person. Look, bro, I commend you. I commend you for that, stepping out of that, because a lot of people who you see are a part right. of that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You are a byproduct of right, that, right. you yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, but it's, it's, it's a real iffy situation because some would say, you're not born this type of way. Right, right, right. You're taught it. You right, know? right, yeah. And either way, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a firm believer, like, bro, I don't judge. Mm -hmm. Never judge. Mm -hmm. Who am I to judge, you right. know what I'm saying? The, the God I serve says, he who cast the first stone, mm -hmm. like, that's, like I don't, I don't do that. But people go through their whole transformation mm -hmm. in their own type of way. Right, well, yeah. You being a part of that at a young age, you seeing this metamorphosis kind of mm -hmm. happen. Yeah. 
Take me through those emotions. Um, it was tough. Like growing up in a town like I was, like I said, small town. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I can say it on camera, but uh, mm -hmm. coming from a small town like I was, like all we knew was gay. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I really didn't know. You know, I would I would jokingly say it to my sister uh, back then before I started really standing up for her name and really understanding her true story. I was like, man, your name Kevin. Mommy named you Kevin. Man, your name Kevin. And he a dead ass it, be serious and say, nah. My name is Maya Henderson. My mm -hmm. name is Maya Henderson. I'm like, Maya Henderson, but I would joke, I'm like, man, your name is Kevin. But I just remember these stories that I would always say, say these things to her, but she was real life standing on her name. Like, yeah. that's not my identity no more. My identity is Maya Henderson. What, at what age, though? I'm curious. This was like, so when I was growing up, um, maybe like eight, nine, 10 years old, my grandma, like, my, like I said, my grandmother was the one that, you know, gave me my foundation in life. I was on a, I was in the choir, I was, mm -hmm. everything in church yeah. I did. Every yeah. Sunday, yeah. every Wednesday, like I was that. And I was, you know, I was a Williams boy. She was a, a, a elder at the church. And I'm trying to go to basketball practices on Sunday. Yeah. And I got AU practice yeah. on Sundays. Yeah. And I got to get with CP3 and them, because yeah. they about to be in Kenton to pick me up to go. Yeah. And my grandma like, no, nah, we got second, third service. <laughs> we got revival. We, Pentecostal. Yeah, Baptist. yeah, we got all that. Like, come on, grandma. Right. And I would start to see these trends that, I'm one of the only kids in the family that's trying to be outside, trying to be active, yeah. right? Now my grandma was sick at the time, but I was I was saying that I'm well, I'm the only one outside playing basketball. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like my sister would play out there a little bit, but then she'll go back in the house and she'll just be in the house taking care of everything in the house for my mm -hmm. grandmother. So I started saying it that way. I'm like, oh, she, my sister just hanging around women, hanging around my grandmother, mm -hmm. hanging around my mom when she come around, hanging around my aunts and my cousins, all females, and she used to praise dance. Mm -hmm. So I start to see. The different trends of, you know, um, uh, what would you call it? Like uh, the Just, feminism part. Yeah, of, you know what I'm comfort, saying? Like, comfort in, 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 right. in, in the environment. Right, right. You know, I started saying that come out as a young kid, and I'm not really understanding it. So I had to like realize that what I was doing back at the time of, you know, I would be get nervous a little bit and be like, oh, should she come to my game? Mm. You know, like, oh, she gonna be in the front row of my game at high school. I'm the best player in the city, like yeah. in the state. You know, everybody wondering like, oh, who is Bro, this person? Real. That's you know real. What I'm saying? So that's, this is all that's type of things real. that I was dealing with. Like, what yeah. somebody gonna say about, oh, that's Bullock's sister right there, walking through the whole game. So I would, yeah. all these things racing through my head. But after, you know, she was gone and. Like I said, my family, we loved her the same way, but mm -hmm. I was always worried about what somebody it else was thinking. You were very conscientious right. to the narrative of what somebody would say. say. Right. And it, it happens all the time. And I'll say it like this, bro. And I, and, 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 and I, hope, I hope people who really get it, get it. Mm -hmm. In any black culture, mm -hmm. there's always somebody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they may not ever come out, mm -hmm. but you know, mm -hmm. it's being an alpha, being a person who, you know, I am who I am, but my situations that I was exposed to in life made me think the way I think, the way I act, the way I act. Right. You know what I'm saying? And we all are byproducts of that. Right. I just, my, my, my soul goes out to just like, damn, I'm hearing this. And I'm like, yo, mm -hmm. I can relate because I've seen it happen. Right, right, right. You know, yeah. I was a part of the time, like, you know, somebody may ask a question. One of your homeboys is like, hey, yo, is he gay? Mm -hmm. Or is she a lesbian? Mm -hmm. Like, what? Like, man, shut, shut the hell up if I beat your ass. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, like, right, yeah. You know, you get yeah. so defensive yeah, yeah. about it. Yeah. And I think especially in, in culture, it doesn't matter, white, black, green, blue, no matter the ethnicity, everybody has real emotions. Mm -hmm. And the being, being open to talking about it is the biggest issue, mm -hmm. you know? And I don't think, I don't think there is a common ground. There's, there's, there's uh, avenues out there but we don't always re revert to those avenues. Right. It's just like, man, shut the hell up, man. All right, let's go play basketball. Like, man, throw me the football, bro. Like, I ain't talking to you about that dumb. Right, right, right. You know? Because I'm the type of person to say, okay, bro, like, you homosexual? Mm -hmm. Okay, sis, like, you a lesbian? Right, right. Let's talk about it. Right, right. Like, what yeah. makes you, like, what happened right, right, in your right. life? Yeah. Rather than saying, like, uh, uh, uh yeah. I'm good on that. And those like, are some of the questions that I wish that I could have asked my sister. Yeah. 
when I was telling you that stage of me going through at a young age, mm-hmm. kind of trying to figure out like what's making you really say Maya Henderson or, yeah. or what you're really going through. Um, and, and, you know, coming from, uh, you know, areas like I come from, uh, mental health is a big thing too. Oh my goodness. So mm-hmm. it, it, it possibly could have stemmed from some mental health things that she could have possibly been going through. Yeah. Maybe some I could have put hands on my sister at a younger age that I may never knew. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it could have been a lot of different things that could have went on to create yeah. this person uh, that she claimed to be uh, when she was living in. That was a part of me not understanding that, and that's what made me, you know, start the foundation to try to understand yeah. on what the lives of these people and, and the things that they actually go through on a daily basis and the different traumas and stuff that they face. Man, that's dope, man. I, I think, you know, to that point is, is we all grieve different. Mm-hmm. We all process things different. Yeah. You know, somebody slapped me in my face, I'm going to react to it right, in right. a different way. Some people may get slapped in their face and they'll go and hurt themselves. Mm-hmm. In, in a way where it's like, yo, it's my fault that why yeah, I yeah, yeah, got yeah. slapped. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So no matter no matter what that is, I really take this as a opportunity to, you know, for the viewer to take heed to the environment. Understand, are you creating a safe environment or are you a part of creating a toxic environment? Right, right. You know, because I is oftentimes we all go through our own journey where our body may be receptive to just the environment. It's like, bro, why the f*** you wear your hair like that, bro? Like, what, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. what's that? Like, yeah. why are you dressing like yeah, this, yeah. dude? You know, and it, that may be it. But it's like, bro, that's this me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In other cases, it's like, I don't know if somebody is able to say, bro, I like what I like. Mm-hmm. So I would I would challenge everybody who sees this man, and I just tip my hat to you, you know, for that, bro. Yeah. Um, you know, for you, um, as far as gun violence and and and, and the stance uh, that you're doing, what are other things that you you kind of do for the youth um, in other um, avenues? Um, so uh, in Belize, I'm trying to internationally bring basketball there and. and bring it within different villages and stuff. Mm. Uh, I got some property down there that I'm working on. So trying to uh, bring basketball international to Belize. So I do that there. Um, in the States, it's pretty much LGBTQ uh, basketball camps, yes. um, standing up for gun violence stuff, meeting with different family members. That's, mm. that's why, why are you, what's your ethnicity? I'm black. Straight black. But African American. <laughs> bees, like when you- Belize. S- Belize, I'm sorry, Belize. 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 Yeah. Why there? Um, so, story, quick little story on the Belize thing. I found Belize off YouTube. Mm. Um, you know, when you're getting funds from our profession and what we're doing, it's like, okay, what I'm going to do with it? Yeah. And one of my main things, it was just more about generational wealth for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a project that, you know, I just felt like I should jump on and it's, it's never really been done before, but... I was all up for the challenge for it. I mean, mm-hmm. you got a lot of people like, oh yeah, what you doing? Or, oh yeah, you got this. Or, oh yeah, you're doing that. But it's just about me just staying focused on what I know that this can be. Mm-hmm. And so I found Belize off of YouTube, sent my family down there to this private island and they walked around on the island. And some of them didn't really fully understand the vision of it. But, um, and then I came down there two months after that mm-hmm. during an all-star break and I saw the property and I was like, okay, this is it. You know what I'm saying? I know what I can do with this. I can put it, I mean, all the islands around there is doing some of the same things. And I'm going to go spend my money every time on a vacation spot for my family and stuff yeah. like that. So I was like- Multi-purpose. <laughs> why can't I have a space for me to be able to rent out right. and enjoy it with family? So for, let's get this straight. You bought an island. I bought an island, yeah. <laughs> when I tell you the boy got his own money, the boy got his own money. An island. Yeah, man, island. Island. It's five acres big. Um, it's, it's shaped in a heart shape. Um, and I knew that this was the island because one of my twins' name is Heart and the other one name is Soul. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's a perfect heart island. And I was like, yeah, this is it right here. This is it. Got his own little marina where I can park my boats at on the inside. And uh, I build like a, a, a mansion villa and then like two other private villas with their own pools and stuff and then they had a restaurant, jet skis, hookah lounge, hey, that's hard. bars, everything. So it's a space that, 
you know, I can't, you know, wait to be able to just sit back and enjoy it with my family and see all the hard work that it's taken now to actually see this yeah. come that, you know, when I'm 40, 50 years old, we yeah. always have a pad that we can call yeah. uh, home. So that was my main thing going in. And now I'm just in, in the buying land thing. Yeah. Once once I heard a little quote, um, when they, when they, uh, <laughs> It was actually Kwame Brown. Kwame Brown. Mm. I was I was watching something that you said. Yeah, he was like, <laughs> he was like, uh, America is for sale, and they won't tell us that. Mm. And you know, with me being an athlete and seeing you know the funds and seeing the money that's given to these athletes, um, nobody never challenged one of these rich rich men to own all this real estate in the world. Mm. No athlete ever done it. He was real about that, and yeah. I was like. America is for sale. The world is for sale. God yeah. ain't making no more land. So I'm just in the phase of buying land and, and, and doing that different type of stuff to come up with different projects. That's dope, man. That's dope. Yeah. Let's transition into this game, bro. Yeah. Um, we get to it. Obviously, Reggie Bullock, you've had a long career. So I'm curious, too, who would make your dream team? We're going to play a game <laughs> called Dream Team with Reggie Bullock. From all the teams that you have played for, draft one player from each team, and that will go on your dream team. Five starters and a six man for all six teams you played for. We will not obviously add the team you're playing for now, the Spurs. So you got the Los Angeles Clippers, the Suns, the Pistons, the Lakers, the Knicks, and the Mavericks. I'm going Chris Paul at the one. Mm. Chris Paul at the one. Is that a loyalty pick or is that just something where you... <laughs> nah, it's not a loyalty pick. It's okay. just stats don't lie. Yeah, Numbers don't fact. lie. Numbers don't lie. So that's I'm going to go CP at the one. And still point, right? Huh? It's the point. No, just this is the whole dream oh, team. Like I'm thinking you saying these no, are the teams I'm playing no. with. Okay, okay. No, for, so, for so any organization I'm, I'm gonna put it, position. I'm going to put it like this. I'm going to name all of them. And then these are the pool of players that you can pick from. Okay, okay, okay. So Los Angeles Clippers... Phoenix Suns, yeah. Detroit Pistons, Los Angeles Lakers, New York Knicks, and Dallas Mavericks. Now, you need a one, two, three, and a five, yeah. and then you also get a six man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, All right, so let's do it. All right, I got uh, Chris Paul still at my one. Still number one. Cool. Los Angeles Clippers. That's off the boat. Um, we got, we got uh, Phoenix the, Suns, the Lakers. Pistons, we got the, the Lakers. Lakers. I got Kobe. Kobe. Yep. Over LeBron. Yeah, I got Kobe over LeBron. Over Shaq. I got Kobe over Shaq. Over Magic. I mean, you, this is Come my on. greatest player of my time. Leg, leg. <laughs> I'm this speaking for the I'm, audience. Hey, hey I'm, I'm stamping it. Say less. I'm okay, Kobe. you got CP3, then Kobe. Matter of fact, you know what's crazy? That could have happened. They it stopped happened. it. could have happened. They stopped it, yeah. That was what, 20? Uh, uh, this was 20, uh, this 2009, 2009. 2010. Yeah. 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 But that never has happened, happened before. Right, right. It was like those mega teams that was happening, and they stopped the trade. Right, right. Um, but, okay, you got Kobe, uh, CP3. The Knicks and Mavericks. Ooh. All right, I'm going to take Rasheed Wallace from Pistons. Detroit. Okay. From the Pistons at the four. Yeah. Um, who is that from the three? That so, like? you, so who you got left? You got the Knicks, the Mavs, and the Suns. Pistons. I'm going to say Grant Hill, though, at the three. At the three. So you got Kobe, CP3, Grant, Grant Hill, Hill um, and Rasheed Wallace. I'm going to take uh, Patrick Ewing at the five from mm. the Knicks. Okay. That's my five right there. You got and then the six Oh, the six man. man. Bullock. Six. You gonna take Bullock. Me? I'm taking myself. Say less. Six so, man. I'm going to tell you what I would have changed. Let me see. Let me hear this here. Mm. I got to hear this. The Clippers, I'm going to do, um, Kyle Lee, you just said him. Crawford. Crawford, okay. But, okay, you're going to take him from the Clippers. All right, right. boom. So that's my sixth man. Okay, okay. The Suns, I'm going to go with Steve Nash. Okay, so that's the point. Right? All right. The Lakers, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with LeBron. All right. Um, the Mavs, I'm gonna go with uh, Dirt. Okay. All right. That is hard you not need, to do. You need uh, some you defense. And, you know, damn defense. We gonna <laughs> shoot, shoot the lights out that one. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with Carmelo. 
Okay, all right. I'm gonna go with Melo. All right, y'all small ball. You feel me? Ain't so much venom out there. <laughs> all right, boom, boom, Pistons. Then the Pistons, I'm gonna go with Rip. I was, but that was what I was gonna say. Boom, Rip. Yeah. Rip yeah, Rip, he, he like a tweener. Yeah. You feel me? He, he could pick up with defense and, you know, he just going, that mid grade. So you got Steve Nash. Steve, so Steve Nash, Jamal Crawford, um, Rip Hamilton, LeBron, Carmelo, and Dirk. Dirk. I think I got him. <laughs> Man, shoot, bro. <laughs> to, to this point, this is always the, the next question, oh, yeah. especially I love talking to basketball players. Yeah. Who could play football and who could play basketball? Give me two players that could do that could transition on both of them. That can play basketball. I got Braun as one of them. And I'll probably go Lou Dort from OKC. What? Probably can play football. What position? Him, uh, I'm, a, I'm not a super big football fan. I mean, even though yeah, you know, yeah, I'm a yeah. Panthers fan, and I'm, you know, I was already going so, through you. Yeah. You feel me? So, <laughs> but yeah. uh, I would probably say he probably be like, I mean, he's short and stocky. Yeah. What, 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 what position like those? A, uh, hybrid back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You know who I think it would do an unbelievable job in the league? Joker. For yeah. real? A tackle. At a tackle? Like, an uh, uh, offensive tackle, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd be deadly. Like, tackles are one of the, if not top three, uh, most athletic positions. Oh, wow. Because his size, ability to be mobile, mm -hmm. and strength, it's nothing like it. Who was the best tackle you ever played with? Michael Orr. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Michael, like, man, Michael Orr is like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, bro, like 320, yeah. 330, mm -hmm. and can move. move yeah. <laughs> but the dude can play. Can he can hoop, too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, what's up, fam? <laughs> like, he just got that little Steve's soft touch, and like, I would always see the, ba the basketball side of players will come out in training camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like that's, that, that's where y'all were like playing stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah. was at Walford. Okay, okay So okay, we'll, okay. we'll be in Walford and then like a basketball would come out, coach would throw us a bone every now and then. Yeah. Like, you know, one of those dog days, you know. If somebody hit a free throw, if somebody hit a three point shot, we don't got to do walk through. Right, 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 right. Man, he nailed that home. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, <laughs> Boy, yeah, yeah, so. You know, it's just, athleticism is just hard to teach. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So who could, who you think who plays football could play basketball? Mm -hmm. Ramsey. Jalen? Yeah. Are you seeing it? I seen it. I seen it. I seen it. Yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, oh, um, big boy from the Browns. Uh, uh, Garrett. Um, Miles Garrett? Miles Garrett, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He a real live monster, though. Yeah. <laughs> Physical. Physical. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he goes back, yeah. back it down. down. Athletic, get off. Dunk, you know what I mean? Yeah. The game has changed in basketball. Yeah, it has. It right? has for sure. It has. I think growing up, especially when I was in high school and seeing just the transformation, it was always the slashers. That right, was the, right. the year of the slashers, like mm -hmm. the AI esque. The Derrick Rose, yeah. you know, the LeBron, and then now it's morphed into the shooter. Yeah. Lasers. Laser community. Bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, bro, now they're playing laser tag. Yeah. <laughs> shooting from yeah. everywhere. Yeah. How do you see the game transitioning really within the next three to five years? I mean, I feel like well, it's already transitioning in that way. Now I just feel like uh Every player is going to be six seven, six eight, six nine, and they're going to be able to switch every position one mm -hmm. through five. So, a point guard that can come in, they can, can be six nine, six eight. They're going to be like magic all the way across the board. Yeah. Like your height, me and your height, all the way across the board. Mm -hmm. Where everybody is interchangeable. We can all switch positions. Kind of similar to 
um, like how Toronto Raptors were last year. It's kind of like six seven, six eight, six nine, six six, all the way across the board. Yeah. And everybody long and can switch most positions. Yeah. Um, I think that's where the league will go at. And like you said, the continuous shooting. Yeah. I'm looking at highlights nowadays with players in the league. It's players in high school going crazy. Like with the well, athletic yeah. ability that these kids got now. Yeah. It's like it's a whole new ball game for them now. So it's just gonna be getting up and down, running, um, and shooting will just be. Y'all, y'all just drafted the number one pick. Yep, yep. Were you able to to kind of kick it? With I haven't, him? I haven't met him with him yet. Uh, yeah. I will meet with him um, on a, next week sometime. I think for for where the game is gonna go, mm-hmm. I think it's gonna go back to bigs. You think it will? Joker, bro. He's like, somebody gonna have to stop that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? He started leaning on you. Yeah. He get to throwing his weight around. Yeah, and it's like now. Granted, to your point, you gonna always have to have the threat to score from anywhere. Right, like right, you just right. can't be Shaq going down the court. Boom! No, I mean, he's the greatest. Right. You know what I'm saying? But not having ball skills to be able to dribble and to get in or out of situations, you know, effectively, mm-hmm. I think that's where the game will go. Yeah. Um, I mean, he definitely a, he, but he like a. Point center. Yeah. He like a point center. He bring the ball up the court. Still can shoot the three. It's just, mm-hmm. he's unguardable at every position. Yeah. You know he's, what I'm saying? But it, and then the, if you double the, him, he trap the, 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 the thing about him when I was watching the finals, it was just like, bro, this guy <laughs> plays so slow, yeah. but so effective. Yeah. And rarely, and then he just has this like, yeah, yeah. boring as hell, yeah. but he's just, Putting up 35 on a, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Who's the hardest person you guarded? Katie. Katie mm-hmm. was definitely probably one of the hardest players. Him and Kyrie Irving was my two toughest matchups that I probably had in the league. Just Katie with his ability to shoot over players. Um, he can score at, you know, from the three, post up. He can, you know, come up and just trace you right from, yeah. from half or wherever you want to shoot it from. And, you know, you got the length. And then Kyrie, he just got one, two, three, four, five combinations that yeah. you got to stick with. And then he just, he know how to get to the back, basket, finish. So he like a three-level scorer also, too. Yeah. So anybody that's probably like a three-level scorer is like some of them toughest matchups. So KD and Kyrie will probably be my two. I want to ask you this question before we get out of here. And I always ask athletes about this. What's more important, championships or impact? Impact. Impact. Well, wow. I would say impact. I would probably say, I mean, because if I was playing to go to the league, if I was, I mean, if I was playing right now uh, for a championship right now, I haven't won one. Mm-hmm. So in order for me to keep my game and everything going, I had to have some type of impact on the game. Yeah. Whether that's defense, making shots being coachable, being dependable. Mm -hmm. So just the impact that I can have on a game will eventually lead to a championship. And I would say it has to start with some type of impact you can have on the game. I see a guy like Chris Paul Mm -hmm. and, or Carmelo. Right. Guys who are undeniably good. Yep. Their impact has morphed some way, shape, form in this sport Mm -hmm. of basketball. Whether... Well, Carmelo doesn't have a ring, mm-hmm. but that doesn't suppress his greatness. Right, right, yep. CP3, same thing. Same, yep. Look at Allen Iverson. Mm-hmm. He had a crazy impact on the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, the water sleeve. Everything. Water sleeve. No, yeah, for yeah. sleeves in, 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 in football now. <laughs> Braves, everything. Like, everything. Yeah. It was like an outlaw to, to what the world was, but when you talk to him and you, you see him now, it's like, yo, like, bro, you was a visionary. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, before we got in, get out of here, man, you got anything else you want to share? Um, no, nah, I just appreciate you having me, bringing me on yeah. the show, man. I see it. You know, I scroll across it all the time on the ground. Yeah. I just hearing what you talk about and bringing different people on and hearing your aspect and on different things is pretty yeah, dope. Bro. So I appreciate you having me. Appreciate you. Ah, that's here. That's it here at Funky Friday. And as we end things here, we're going to do this in unison. We're going to start with this camera. Then we're going to go to that camera. Then we're going to finish with that camera saying together one love. You ready? Yeah. One finger. Oh. One pink. Oh, you said, oh.
Oh no, you said one. I thought you said one finger, one joint. What? I was like, what? <laughs> Boy, he uh, the one four high, one four low. Hey, hold on. Uh uh. No no no. Move move. Get back. <laughs> then here we go. All right. One finger. One pinky. One thumb. All together. One well, love. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Boom, dig it, bro. Appreciate yeah, yeah. you, bro. Yes, sir. Boom, Appreciate boom. it, man. Mm. Yep.